Why Your Hard Work Doesn't Lead to Your Success Our forefathers were hunters-gatherers. The men hunted animals while the women gathered them. They were also nomadic. They had to move from one place to another to hunt and to pick their foods. About 10,000 years ago, however, for the first time, human beings made a great discovery and that was that we can actually grow our foods and so we started growing our foods. Prior to this era, our fathers had to be extremely strong physically because they woke up every day to fight with animals, many of which were wild animals. They also had to protect their family from the predictors so physical strength was the number one thing that mattered. No, things didn't change when we became farmers because farming was still hard work. Though we can now stay in a place and build ourselves some homes, we still had to work extremely hard to till the land, plant and nurture our foods. Soon after we started settling down, we noticed that we'll need leaders. These leaders will have to lead us, put things in order and defend our village. Not against the wild animals alone but against our fellow humans from the next village. So these kings have to be strong. They had to be warriors. Again, the physical strengths were the only thing that mattered. Because we didn't sleep, we started inventing tools to make our works easier. We invented cutlasses and hoes to farm and arrows and swords to fight. Now we have technologies to make our works easier. But don't be deceived, it was still not as easy as you would imagine today. So physical strength was still the most needed skill. About 200 to 250 years ago, however, we discovered even more advanced technologies we could use to farm. Now we have tractors and other technologies that could allow a few of us to produce the food for thousands of people. We call this the agricultural revolution and it should make us work less. But again, right in the corner was an industrial revolution. We now discovered how to mass produce everything. The smart guys among us created the industries and every one of us had to work there. Though you needed a lot of brain power to build a company, you don't need 1% of such thinking to work in the industry. Just show up and be part of the machines. Again, it's about physical strength. It was around this time that we figured out that we must make public education compulsory, not really because we cared about giving education to people but because we wished to train them to be machines, to work for our industries. We wanted them to work in our industries and because the industrialists were rich and powerful, they influenced how the school was structured and what you can learn there. You really won't learn anything except how to obey others. Some experts agree that the mid-80s was the end of the industrial age. And what does that mean? Well, that we are no longer in the agrarian age means that we no longer need your physical strength to farm. That we are no longer in industrial age means that we will no longer reward you for your ability to work 14 hours a day in physical labor. What is the implication of this? Very simple. If in the 21st century your strengths were physical, we've got no market to reward you handsomely for it. Yes, we can give you a job and employ you to be part of the machines we use, then pay you a token to keep you alive. But we can't reward you like you truly deserve. This is the number one reason why most people are poor even though they work very hard. The world has changed. You just need to get this right. The world has changed. We are no longer where we used to be so we do not appreciate what we used to appreciate. Take for instance when you were a baby. Your favorite gift could be candy or toys. Today if I give you these two things, would you appreciate it? Probably no. But why? Because you've moved on and you can only appreciate something else now. So it is when you're trying to offer the old service to the new world. You get it? That's what school taught you to do. That's what the society taught you to do. Go to school, study hard to get good grades and get a job. What the new century wants Now, the markets no longer appreciate the strong bones. What the market is willing to pay for now is the strong brain. Stop being physically hard working. Start being mentally hard working. Here are some real life examples. How much physical work do you think it took to build PayPal? 
maybe some hard work at the beginning, but that company was sold for $1.5 billion. After three years and about six months, the company started. Can you work hard enough to make $1.5 billion in four years? Facebook was invented about 16 years ago and today it is worth over $100 billion. Can 100,000 people work hard enough to make $100 billion in 16 years? YouTube was sold to Google in less than two years it started. It was sold for $1.65 billion. Can you work hard in your entire life to get such money? Above are a few obvious and big examples but they are not the only examples that exist. All over the world, there are millions of people who are making good money by using their brains, not their bones. I know what I'm talking about. I'm running three businesses. I don't do the hard work. I employ people who were trained to do the hard work. My work is to think and create. That's the only way to be rich in the 21st century. Stop living in yesterday Stop being in the 19th century. Stop thinking that hard work will make you rich. Napoleon Hill wrote arguably one of the best books on money. Hill did not call that book Work and Grow Rich. Even though he published the book in 1937, he called that book Think and Grow Rich. The key word here is think. Henry Ford built one of the biggest companies in his generation. When he wanted to give advice, he didn't say that hard work is the secret of success. Thinking is the hardest thing therein and that's why most people don't do it. Thinking that's the hardest work of the century but as Ford said, most people don't do it. Some helpful tips If you want to be a creative thinker and become rich in this age and time, I suggest you do the following. One, Consume a lot of creative and educational materials. If you like reading, read good books. If you love videos, watch meaningful and educative videos. If you like audio, listen to helpful and challenging audio programs. This is important because your mind is like your body. You have to feed your body nutritious meals to make it healthy. You have to feed your mind with healthy meals to make it healthy and functioning. Two. Use your brain. This will be offensive to some people because everyone thinks that they are using their brains but that's not true. Think, ask questions, be curious, challenge that status quo, let your brain work and it will work better each time. 3. Spend time with yourself Ours is a very noisy world. We are busy with work and even when we leave the office, the social media is waiting for us. Because of this, we don't have time to be with ourselves. Just as you can't know other people until you spend time with them, you can't know who you are if you don't spend time with yourself. 4. Hang around creative and positive thinkers You are not you, you are your friends. If you hang around people who don't use their brains, you won't use yours. In the past, what determines whether you'll be rich or poor is how much of physical energy you have. Today, the game has changed. It's no longer about bones, it's now about brains. Thank you very much for watching our videos. We'd like to give you another interesting video for you to enjoy next. But before then, our team will be very happy if you can like this video and share it with your friends on social media. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss other interesting videos like this. Look at your screen now to see two other videos we handpicked for you to enjoy next. We love you.